Good. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Um, I have entitled this session, It's Java Gym, but not as we know it. And I have to say that the inspiration for this particular presentation I'm doing came from Yarek, who's sitting down at the front here, because I saw him do a, a presentation on this subject uh, back at Voxt in Zurich earlier this year, and it kind of got me thinking about this. And so I've kind of done a, a variation on, on what Yarek did. So what are we actually going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about lambda expressions, but we're really going to go more into what's behind lambda expressions. So quick show of hands, who's using JDK8? Okay, good. Quick show of hands, who's used lambda expressions? Okay, I bet you haven't used lambda expressions like we're going to see in a moment. Um, because lambda expressions, as we use them in JDK8, are very powerful and very useful. And so we use them in lots of places where we want to pass, typically we want to pass behavior as a parameter rather than a value. And so we can then evaluate based on that behavior. And this all goes way back in terms of the history of lambda expressions to the 1930s. And Alonzo Church, who came up with this thing called lambda calculus. And lambda calculus is really the basis of functional programming. So again, let's have a quick show of hands, because you're all Java programmers, but who would consider themselves a functional programmer? Yes, you see there's a few people there, but there's not many. And I have this issue as well, because I'm not a functional programmer. And I remember when I was at university, I did one course on Lisp. And I remember at the time when I did it, thinking my brain doesn't work that way. You know, I can do imperative code, I can do procedural code, you know, done lots of languages, and I have no problem with that. But functional programming takes a different kind of thought process. And so lambda calculus is really the sort of basis of that. What does it have to do with Java? Right, so what we're talking about here is exploding head lambdas. So we are typically imperative programmers. We understand about loops, we understand about variables, we understand about maintaining state, all of those good things. Functional programming is not about that. Functional programming is about using functions and applying them repeatedly, so in effect sort of like a recursion approach, rather than using a loop. And as we'll see, you can do some kind of weird and wonderful things with this. But interestingly enough, and this is kind of what we're going to talk about in a bit more detail, is the fact that lambda calculus and Turing machines are functionally equivalent. So anything that you can do with a Turing machine, you can do with Lambda Calculus. Um, and there's you know, some more kind of interesting things there, because Alonzo Church was actually the supervisor for Alan Turing. So there's you know, another connection there. But when you get into using these things in a much more sort of complex way, well, it certainly gives me a headache just trying to work out how these things work. And we'll, I'll, I'll talk you through an example as we go through. So the idea of this is what can we do in Java only using lambda expressions? So we're not allowed to use any primitives, we're not allowed to use any types, we're not allowed to use any operators. How can we replicate what is you know, possible in Java only using lambda expressions? So the first thing we need in terms of lambda expression is a functional interface because a lambda expression represents the implementation of a single abstract method in a functional interface. For the purposes of this particular session, what we're going to do is we're going to use an interface called Lambda. Okay, very original name there. And it's going to have a single method called apply, which takes as a parameter a lambda and returns another lambda. So you can pass lambdas, get lambdas back, that's all you can do. There's nothing else in there, it's just lambdas. What we need to do is we need to understand some of the basics about lambda calculus and what you have. So we can create a very simple lambda expression which is called identity. An identity is a lambda expression that will return the same value that you give it. Okay, there's nothing very exciting about that, but it is very useful and it's very powerful in terms of lambda calculus. And what I'm going to use as well to, to kind of make life easier in terms of being able to see these things is I'm going to use lambda notation in some of the examples just to make it shorter rather than having to put all of the, the actual Java code there because otherwise it gets very, very complicated. Um, I will show you the code at the end 
make sure I've got enough time for that, running it in the IDE so that you can see it actually work. So the way you represent that is just lambda x dot x. So that's the, the equivalent lambda expression. What we then need is representations of Boolean values. So we need a true and we need a false. Now interestingly, if you look at this, what you get is Boolean false is a lambda expression which returns another lambda expression. And the lambda expression that it returns is identity. So the thing about that is that false will always return identity as a lambda expression. True is logically the opposite of false. So we have a lambda expression which returns another lambda expression which is not identity. So false will always return identity, true will always return something, a lambda expression which is not identity. So immediately I kind of look at that and I go, oh, hang on, well, well shouldn't it be the other way around? Because true should always be, you know, sort of like identity. And, but anyway, so what we then need to do is look at numbers. So how can we represent numbers with lambdas? And these are what are called church cardinals, so church numbers, if you like. And zero, because zero, and this is where we see the link with mathematics, Zero is the identity for addition and subtraction. So if you add zero to any number or you subtract zero from any number, you get the same number. So it's the identity for addition and subtraction. And if we think about some programming languages, like C is a good example, if you do an if statement, you don't have a Boolean in the sense that you do a Boolean type in Java. So what you can do is you can say, well, in that case, zero equates to false and anything that's not zero equates to true. So we can see how false in that case is identity because its identity is zero and it's the, um, yeah, so it, it equates to false. So zero is the same as false, which is the same as the identity. So we have the same lambda expression that we use for uh, false, we can use for zero. If we want to create numbers, what we do is we simply apply a function to x in terms of our lambda expression and if we want higher numbers we simply apply that function multiple times. So we apply a function to a function to a function however many times we want that particular number. So in the case of 1 what we have is a lambda, func lambda expression which returns a lambda expression that implements a function on or applies a function to a value. For two, we have a lambda expression which returns, actually that's a typo there, um, lambda expression which applies a function and then applies a function again to a value. So we end up with two applications of the function. And you can do that as many times as you like. To kind of make things easier, you can then also define much more complicated lambda expressions. So you can define a successor which simply takes a number which remember is represented by a lambda expression and adds one to it. But in the case of this, what we actually have to do is apply the function again. So you end up with this lambda expression, which returns a lambda expression, which then returns another lambda expression, which applies the function and then uses n dot apply of f and applies x to that. You can see where you know things start to get more involved. The predecessor and I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but the predecessor, as you can see, is even more complicated because what we need to do is we need to reduce the number of applications of that function by one, and we need a very complicated lambda expression in order to define that. Addition and subtraction. Now, addition is essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the numbers that we've got. So we've got two numbers that we want to add both represented by lambda expressions, and then we're going to use a lambda expression to manipulate those lambda expressions to create a new lambda expression, which is the value. And so I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment. Subtraction is slightly simpler, simply because we can use the, uh, the predecessor lambda expression that we've already defined. So you can apply that and then reduce the number by one. Uh, by, sorry, you can subtract the two, one number from the other. So let's look at an example. Let's look at solving 2 plus 2. Now, I was working on this yesterday morning, and I was having breakfast with my son, who's 10 years old, and he's doing maths at school, and he's, you know, he's getting on well with that. 
And he was saying, like, Daddy, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm trying to figure out what's two plus two. And he looked at me like I was stupid and he said, well, it's easy, it's four. And I said, well, yeah, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use lambda calculus to do that rather than just numbers. And he's like, ah, oh, okay. So he looked at what I was writing and he said, no, I don't understand that. And I, I knew exactly what he was talking about there. Right, so if we look at two plus two, we know that two as a lambda expression is represented by this. So it's lambda f, lambda x, and then apply the function f twice on itself uh, on the value x to give us the representation of 2. Plus, the lambda expression that we've already seen is represented by this lambda expression. So we have mn, which are our values that we want to add up. And then we've got f, x, the lambda expression. And then we've got m of f, n of f applied to x. And what we want to do is we want to essentially say, using Polish notation, plus 2, 2. And if we were to call this as a lambda expression, we would say lambda 4 equals plus dot apply 2 dot apply 2. And that will apply the lambda expression and generate the result. So let's see how that actually works, because this is, this is where life kind of gets interesting. OK, so we have the lambda expression that represents addition. OK, and m and n are the two values that we want to add up. So what we need to do is we need to replace m and n in our lambda expression with the lambda expressions that we have for the numbers that we're adding. So in this case, it's 2 and 2. So we replace m in the lambda expression with a new lambda expression, which is 2, and take off the lambda n and lambda m, because we don't need those anymore because we've done the, rep the replacement. What we then need to do is evaluate what's inside these brackets that I've underlined. So this is where we're essentially applying the lambda expression on the left with the value or the value on the right to the lambda expression on the left. So we've got two examples here that are identical, where you've got lambda f of lambda x, f of f of x, and the value that we want to substitute there is f. Now, if we look at the left-hand side of the lambda expression, then we've got lambda f. So essentially, we're replacing f with f, which means we get exactly the same thing. So we basically just drop the f, and we get that. So we, we simplify the, the lambda expression down. So now we've got um, the situation where what we actually need to look at is this part of the inner brackets. So we're saying, OK, we've got lambda x dot f of f of x, and we want to apply to that a value which is another lambda expression. So we're going to replace x in the left-hand side with the red part, which represents lambda x dot f of f of x. And so we, we put that in the middle there, and we say f of lambda x of f of f of x and of x. And then all we need to do now is to evaluate the lambda x of f of f of x with x. So we're going to replace x with x which is quite simple, and we end up with the situation where we get lambda f of lambda x, f of f of f of f of x, and that's 4. So we've actually added the two numbers together just using lambda expressions. So I've got a minute and a half left. A um, couple of places you can go for more information if you're, if you're actually interested in this enough to, to go further. Um, it honestly isn't really very practical in terms of writing Java code. It's just more a kind of fun thing. I wouldn't actually expect anybody to really use this. Um, Yarek's presentation is on YouTube. You can see a lot more detail, and he goes into a lot, uh, a lot of other stuff with this. Um, and then there's a guy called Dixon Yang, 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 who works for Microsoft, and he's written a very good set of blog entries, which are C sharp based, but you can you can see the relationship because C sharp and Java have a lot of similarities. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, if I've got time, I've got to, oh, got, I mean, must have. A couple of seconds here, just so I can show you. Right, here we go. So this, let's see if I can, ooh, can I make that bigger? What's the, ah, that's it, good. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got the lambda for plus, which is, yeah, so m dot apply of f, apply n dot apply of f dot apply x. Uh, I've got lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 4, so we can see what the those lambdas are. And then we're going to apply plus, or we're going to apply 2 to plus, and then apply 2 to plus again. So we get the, the total. Um, yeah, and I, there's an extra line there I don't need. 
So we'll just take that out and run that. And you will see at the bottom that we've got uh, 2 plus 2 is the same as 4. So we've got the, the actual correct result. Um, and that actually uses, again, Yarrick's uh, library that he wrote in order to take a Lambda expression and then print it out in a form which allows you to see it on the screen like that, um, which again uses some, some kind of uh, strange sort of magic inside. So there we go. Um, that's, that's all the time we've got for that. Um, hopefully that has been fun. Thank you very much.